I'm Don Bush, a World War II veteran, one of the few remaining. We interrupt this program to bring you a special news bulletin. The Japanese have attacked Pearl Harbor, Hawaii, by air. President Roosevelt has just announced. Yeah, we were in the Navy. I was in charge of a 10-man communications team. And when we invaded the islands, the 10 of us put our marine gear on and our rifles and knives and so forth, wow. going ashore with the troops in the first waves. And, and then the next wave lines up and comes in in a few minutes. And when you get in there, even though, the, even though our ships and planes have practically obliterated the beach, you'd think there wouldn't be anything left in there. But sure enough, the Japanese would rise up out of their holes and be there to greet us. It's quite, a, quite an experience with the, the loud noise and everything that's going on, bombs blasting and things burning on the beach and smoke and dead bodies and so forth. So it's, it's quite an experience. We traveled in convoys. All of these would be big ships like that, and our ship was here leading them because we had the Commodore on our ship that was over all of them. So we led, and the enemy is going to be up, is always after the leaders. So our ship was always a target. Out of all of them, they torpedoed our ship, split it in half across the deck and down both sides, but it didn't come apart. It stayed floating. It ruined our engines and propeller because it hit in the back. So we were sitting there dead in the water, something like about one o'clock in the morning. And uh, it just, to me it just felt like some giant had picked up that ship and then just slammed it down. We were out from Manila in the South China Sea and the Manila, Manila was still Japanese. And we towed that ship for three months to get up to Pearl Harbor. But anyway, what I'm saying is, all, all of that stuff, they didn't sink our ship. We got it back to Pearl Harbor, and they fixed it up, and I saw it again before the end of the war. Well, one reason I wrote this book is so <coughs> my children and grandchildren would realize some of the things that went on and, and realize that they should be ready to protect their nation or support their nation whenever anything does happen. I think a lot of times of the 405,000 men that never did come home, they gave up their whole life, everything. And how lucky I am to have come home and been able to have a family and enjoy life and live to a ripe old age. And see all these grandchildren and great-grandchildren. That's what those guys missed. There's always wars going on and there's always got to be people to fight in them. So it takes all of us, and I appreciate the ones that are in there now.